Um, I heartily welcome to all of you who attend this uh, evening tonight. Uh, this is uh, the 10th meeting in the uh, meeting series Tenkelofte. I don't know how to translate that into English, but um, uh, it, hmm? tung -tung. it might even sound better in English, but we call it Tenkelofte. Um, and tonight we have a focus on uh, climate uh, issues. And um, I'm the neutral moderator here. Uh, and uh, so this is, um, I, I uh, welcome you all if you are uh, climate realists on both sides, if you are uh, climate alarmists on both sides, and, uh, or if you are just curious on the climate change debate. What? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Don't joke. <laughs> and um, uh, we will do it this way. Uh, we have uh, two um, speakers here tonight. Two speakers I'm very proud of, uh, proud to introduce. Uh, they will speak for approximately 25 minutes uh, each. After uh, uh, they have given their uh, speeches, we will have a short break, a 10-minute break. <coughs> During that break, um, those who have comments or questions to the speakers uh, will be able to sign up on a list uh, in the back here um, at AINA, and they can sign up. That's because we have a lot of people there tonight, and um, I don't want to miss anyone if you just uh, take up your hands. So if you have it on the list, um, that's a proof that you have asked to ask me for, uh, to ask a question. So um, let me start by introducing the, uh, and, and after, uh, after the um, break, um, I will uh, introduce uh, the spokesman on climate and energy affairs for the Progress Party. And he will say a few words, but then it's up to you. We will finish at 8 o'clock. So I hope it will be an exciting evening. Our two speakers tonight, um, are two speakers that um, are very um, high rated in the field. You can say that they are representing uh, the two sides in the debate on climate change. And uh, the first one out is, uh, is one of our own, if I can say so. It's the Norwegian one. And uh, his name is Rasmus Benestad. He's a senior researcher, senior scientist uh, at the uh, Norwegian Meteorological Institute. Um, he has um, taken part in the debate for uh, a long time now. And um, uh, he's, uh, he's a member of the group realclimate.org, which I have also um, uh, given you the address to on the Facebook page for Tenkelofte. He's also a member of the Institute of uh, Psychics, the American Geophysical Union. And in 2002, he uh, published the book Solar Activity and Earth Climate. So um, let me give the floor first to uh, uh, Benesta, and then we'll listen to the other side afterwards. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And I want, would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present the story of climate change. But first, I want to correct you. I do not uh, take the responsibility of being a member of the, uh, the Institute of Psychics, which would be the physics of physics. OK. So, well, I'm not a psychic. Yeah. OK. I'm going to um, give, uh, present the story of climate change. And, I, and here I will talk about climate and what makes it change, rather than focusing on uh, the stolen emails from the uh, Climate Research Union, Unit or the book The Climate Cover-Up by James Hogan. My, uh, my, my story, will, uh, uh, I will talk about climate and what's make, what makes it change 
And the bottom line is sound and robust science and statistics. That involves the laws of physics and measurements. Measurement, with, uh, with, with measurements, we also refer to as empirical data or just observations. The laws of physics explain a great deal around us. For instance, the weather. We use the laws of physics to, uh, in the weather predictions to predict how the air moves around, the temperatures, and where it will rain. The laws of physics also um, explain why the, the sun is yellow, the clouds are white, the sunset's orange, the rainbow's colorful, and the sky blue. The laws of physics, um, sorry. The laws of physics uh, can also tell us the relationship between uh, temperatures and the light. And, uh, and also, uh, um, uh, the, the laws of physics tell us that there's a greenhouse effect on Earth. So how does this greenhouse effect work? I'll try to give you a uh, simple, simplified picture with the em emphasis on the main features. Of course, the situation is far more complicated with the details such as convection and um, evaporation. An analogy of the greenhouse effect is a kettle of water. The kettle boils much quicker and is able to maintain a higher temperature with its lid on. The kettle is heated from the bottom and the heat escapes from the top. Uh, the lid slows the heat loss. This schematic shows um, the Earth. The, the sunlight warms uh, the surface and, this, and the main um, heating of the planet happens at the ground. The ground radiates uh, or loses its energy through radiation of heat rays. Uh, the planet's heat loss takes place higher up, about five and a half kilometers above the ground. The blue line there shows the vertical temperature profile. The, temp uh, the vertical temperature profile is determined to some extent by the gases in the atmosphere. I will talk more about the temperature profile later on. So the, what is the greenhouse effect? The greenhouse effect takes place when the air absorbs the heat rays emitted from the ground. The air gets warmer, but it too will send off heat rays in order to cool down. About half of the heat rays are sent upwards, and, a, and about half is sent back to ground. The air above can absorb heat rays from the air below. And that, so it goes on upwards through the atmosphere. At the top of the atmosphere, there's no more air left, so the heat rays are free to escape to space. And what determines the amount of heat the Earth loses is the temperature at this height. An increased greenhouse effect takes place when there are more gases in the atmosphere that trap 